Hello everyone, it's Lily Mae here, creator of The Glambitious Brand, and I am so excited to bring another dynamic entrepreneur to you. If you're new to the brand, definitely head over to theglamceo.com to join our email list. We send out funding opportunities, we send out grants, marketing opportunities, interview opportunities, you name it. So definitely head over to theglamceo.com to sign up and stay in the fold of what we're doing. Uh, without further ado, Doreen, introduce yourself and tell everyone exactly what you do. Thank you very much. So what's up, everyone? My name is Doreen Delavante. I'm your favorite consumer law expert. I teach people how to repair, rebuild, and restore their own credit. I also teach business owners, especially in the credit niche, how to potentially scale their business to make an extra fifty to 100000 per year. I love it. And scale is a buzzword these days because everyone wants to scale. So can you elaborate when you say scale, what do you mean exactly? So there's four key principles. It's true regardless of any business model, but the ones, because I'm in the credit niche and I teach consumer law. So I, I just specialize in credit repair business, but the formula of lead generation, lead conversion, client ascension and continuity. So those four key principles can scale any business. I love it. I love it. And so tell us about, you know, the credit bureaus and, you know, getting payments deleted in that process that you help people with. So um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to break a lot of people's heart right now. Credit bureaus don't exist. A lot of people think they do, but they don't. So, um, how I found this out was when I started, I wasn't getting no response. I used to send letters addressed to credit bureaus. But then when I started studying consumer law, there is nothing in the law, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, 15 U.S.C. 1681, that says a credit bureau, they are called consumer reporting agencies, right? So when I made the click, I'm like, this is why I wasn't getting no result. So the only bureau described in credit in the law is the CFPB, the Bureau of Consumer Protection and Finance. A credit bureau don't exist. So when, when, when consumers or individuals send letters out addressed to credit bureaus, they get no response. It's like me calling you Gloria. That's not your name. So if I say Gloria, Gloria, I'll just be here saying Gloria. You don't have to look at me. You could say, who are you talking to? But that's if you choose. But if I address you as Lily May, that is you now. You're going to respond. So when we learn their words and how we use their word to identify them, this is how we get results. Because when we think of bureau, what do you think of? I think about the FBI, actually. You see? So it's a play upon words. They've mastered words. And because we associate bureau with federal or government agencies, these self-appointed corporations adopted the term, just like the Federal Reserve Bank. There is nothing federal about it. It is a private bank. But they use words because they understand the power of words. And this is how they subconsciously keep us in a credit mud mentality where we think if they put something on the report, we cannot challenge it. Wow. Wow. That is such a powerful point. So speaking of, you know, challenging things um, on someone's credit report, like if they have several late payments or things like that, can those types of things be deleted or what's the process, you know, with that? So what if I told you a late payment is illegal and it shouldn't be on your consumer report? Really? I can prove it better than I can show you. <laughs> like, so fifth, I want everybody that's watching this right now, I want you to fact check everything I say, right? I want you all to Google 15 USC 1681A. And then you're going to go down to number two, the exclusion section. And it's going to say, by the way, let me ask you, what does exclusion mean? What does it mean to exclude something? It means that it's not a part of, you it's know, not a what part you of have. it, right? Right. So it's going to say something like this. This is me just call, recalling it from memory. Um, except as provided in paragraph three, the term consumer report does not include. And then when you go down to DA1, it's going to say, 
reports solely as to transactions, keyword, transactions between the consumer, which is the individual, and the person. Person in law means corporation, trust, um, government agency, individual. So when we understand that a person don't mean a flesh and blood, you and me, person also means corporations. So when it says that your transaction between the consumer and the person making the report is excluded from your consumer report. What does that mean? See, we've, we've, um, I don't know who started this, where people think your FICO score on your consumer report are the same thing. I don't know who started spreading that rumor, but when you look up the definition of a consumer report, a FICO score is not a part of the definition. See, FICO is Fear Isaacs Corporation, separate entity. They give out what is called a risk score based on information provided by your consumer report. See, your consumer report is independent of your FICO. Your FICO doesn't exist without your consumer report. Separate things. So late payment is a factor. It's one of the factors, the five factors that make up your FICO. Because the factors that make up your FICO are length of credit history, utilization, um, length of credit, new inquiries, and mixture of account. It's a, fact, it's a factor for FICO. It's not a factor for your consumer report. So when we take them apart, Based on law, based on the Fair Credit Reporting Act, we now see that, wait, they've been reporting my transaction all of this time, but the FICO and the consumer report are separate things. A payment history is excluded on my consumer. This is law. So anybody watching this right now, Google it right now, 15 U.S.C. 1681A, go down to number two, then D-A-1, and you're going to see it. Wow. Wow. I feel like you're giving us a master class here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I need to be taking notes. <laughs> this is so good. So what is the fastest way to start repairing one's credit? It is so simple that it is hard. Your personal information. So simple, right? So at any given time, right now, if you pull up your consumer reports, you will see anywhere from three to five variations of your name. It's either they're going to have your first name, last name, your last name, first name, a middle initial, or different spelling of your name. So when I, if I'm a lender, an underwriter looking, and I see you with multiple names, I'm not, I'm going to be like, wait, is this person applying for credit using so many different AKAs, right? And addresses. You have addresses from 10, 15 years ago. You're, probably your Atlanta address is probably still on there. And you've left for so long. See, they don't do a good job updating current information. Whatever they get, they put it on there. So when we look at the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the first thing Congress says, when you Google 15 U.S.C. 1681 and you scroll down to A, it says accuracy and fairness of the report. The information must be accurate. If it's not accurate, it must be deleted. So if an address is there that is not my address, I cannot receive mail there. I cannot get no form of legal document, no correspondence also, um, at all. That's not an accurate address. That is a incorrect address. And inaccurate and incorrect items must be deleted from the consumer report. And when you go to 15 U.S.C. 1681EB, Congress speaks on accuracy of the report. It says whenever a consumer reporting agency provides a consumer report, they must adopt reasonable procedures to maintain maximum possible accuracy. So let's look at what accuracy means. All values correct. All values exact. What does maximum mean? To hold something to the highest standard. 
So if the definition says everything on there must be true, it must be accurate, it must be down to the penny. Why are we accepting subpar reporting from these agencies? Wow, great, great, great point. So in the instance that someone, you know, has like collections and things like that going on, mm -hmm. you know, what is your advice for them as it relates to paying collections? Don't or... pay collections. Mm -hmm. What if I told you the law says a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector? Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So 15 U.S.C. 1692CC, in the section marked cease and desist, Congress says a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector. This is law. So everything that I'm telling you, I have the resource for it. Go look it up. So don't, like... I hear so many people just saying, don't pay collections, don't pay collections, but they don't know why. This part of the law speaks because Congress, I don't write the laws, I'm just reading them. Congress says a consumer can refuse to pay a debt collector. It's in their laws. Mm -hmm. And so, so would, you, <laughs> would you say the alternative is if a collections is reaching out to someone instead of paying the collections, just pay the original source of the debt? Nope. Basically? Oh, no. <laughs> None of them. Because, okay. you see, when you can refuse to pay, you can refuse to pay. Now you want to use what is called a notice of validation of debts. So the new law that came out in November, November, 20, uh, November 31st, 2021, there's been an update to debt collection. There's a lot of things that collectors cannot do anymore. And one of them is they cannot put any debt collection or any account relating to any alleged debt collection on a consumer's report without getting in contact with the consumer. If they don't get in, so let's say you a collection popped up out of nowhere, Lily, and this debt collector never, never made any attempts to contact you, but it just popped up like last week. That is a violation and you can sue them for that and they're going to settle before court and guess what they're going to cut your check oh, wow. but the average person don't know it because you don't really find people every day reading law correct <laughs> what they say the uh the devil is in the writing the is devil is in the details what? yes mm -hmm. that's the saying that's the mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. and so what about student loans um you know can people get that type of thing deleted from their credit so I had a student two weeks ago. I have a university. It's called um, Consumer Law Secrets University. You can find it anywhere on Google. Just Google is going to pop up. One of my students last week got 11 student loan accounts deleted. Now, this is what a lot of people don't know, too. So I think on Tuesday, um, Biden, um, ITT Tech, so I'm not sure if you heard the buzz about it, but they forgave $3.9 billion Dollars. It's either they forgave it or they canceled it worth of student loans. So student loans are being canceled, but a student loan is just like any other account. There's absolutely nothing special about it. It doesn't matter if it's federal. It doesn't matter if it's private. An account is an account and you can delete any account from your consumer report because there is no law none that says any item must be reported. The law says they may report. May is an option. But the same law that says that they may report gives the consumer the right to opt out. Because the first thing Congress speaks on, on the Fair Credit Reporting Act, uh, 15 U.S.C. 1681A4, is a consumer's right to privacy. And then when you go over to debt collection to 15 U.S.C. 1692A, it's going to speak on a consumer's right to individual privacy. Privacy. And when you go to um, 15 U.S.C. 6801, when it comes to protection of your non-public information, personal information, the words that come up are privacy, um, 
what's that word? Confidentiality. It speaks on privacy and confidentiality. Now, if these if these accounts or your information must be reported, why would Congress speak about them maintaining privacy on your information, protecting it, and confidentiality? These are the words we overlook. But when these institutions report stuff, we think um, we cannot do anything. That is so far from the truth. You control the report. You dictate what gets reported. It is not the other way around. Wow. Wow. So you mentioned a program that you have because you said your students. So tell us a little bit more detail about that program that you have to help people with consumer law. So in my university, Consumer Law Secrets University, what I do is I teach uh, regular um, everyday people how to repair, rebuild, restore their own credit, get their power back so I can put them in a position to have the power to purchase. And then I teach also credit repair business owners how to use consumer law to help their clients. So I teach them how to make the letters, how to read the law, how to find uh, case laws. We, we go all in and there is like list any account right now. There's not an account listed on a consumer report that I haven't built a letter for or my students haven't gotten deletions for. Any account. Wow. Now, what inspired you to last week. <laughs> what inspired you to get into this particular industry and help people in this way? So I'm not I'm not from here. So when I came from Jamaica, um, I keep hearing this word credit, 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 credit. I didn't know what it meant or the power of credit. So for in, like in Jamaica, everything is cash. Like we don't really have a credit system the way it's structured here. So it's either you have your money or you don't, right? So like I went for a phone. Oh, let us check your credit. No, bro, I got the money right here. What you? No, let me get the phone. So I nope, couldn't get it. So when I went for my first car, oh my god, two thousand and seven Nissan Altima. 75,000 miles, I was paying 18% on it, 18.9 to be exact, right? And I couldn't get it on my own. I needed a co-signer. Now, I didn't know what the implications of getting a co-signer meant, but I put my friend in such a position. You see, if I had defaulted, they would have been coming after him and his credit would have gotten messed up. But I didn't know. But, you know, I'm responsible. I paid it off and all of that great stuff. But I couldn't get an apartment either. So it's like everything I needed, I needed somebody else. So now I'm like, okay, no, I can't say, Lorraine, you're a man and this, but everything financial, I have to call somebody to verify for me or to sign a document. So I started looking into this whole credit stuff. And then I found out like, bro, you need to pay attention to this credit stuff. So then no, I got introduced to consumer law. And that's when I recognized that, Lorraine, you can start getting yeses. And I have. So like I had a, a, a 504 credit score and in six months of learning the consumer law, I had my first 805 and then I've built out an 800 credit score three times in one year because then I started leveraging it. I started opening up businesses, my LLCs, getting them funded, rinsing and repeating. So you said you went from a 500 credit score mm -hmm. to an 800 credit score and how long? It took me six months. Really? Wow. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> that is amazing. Thank you. There are some people that are, you know, trying for years and years to achieve, you know, that level of credit score. So I think that is amazing. Wow. Information. Wow. Knowledge is power, clearly. 100%. Wow. wow. So how could people, you know, connect with you or, you know, what would you advise people to do after hearing this? They're probably like, mm -hmm. whoa, I need to get my credit together. Like, where should I start? Fact check me. I want every, like, you probably won't hear nobody else who did an interview with you say this. Everything that I say in this interview, write it down and go look it up. If I am telling any lies, I want you to put in the comments, the rain, <laughs> stop lying. <laughs> I'm so, like, this is how confident I am about the information. And if you want to find me, 
um, type Doreen De Levante in any Google search engine, right? Or go to Instagram, the credit hero. But I have so much free content on YouTube before anyone thinks to, you know, Doreen, you're talking all this great law stuff, but I don't know if you're for real. Go check my stuff out on YouTube. My free content on YouTube is better than a lot of people's paid content. I give so much information for free. Go check me out. Fact check every single thing I say. And then when you're ready to get out the mud, when you're ready to elevate yourself, when you're ready to be in a position to have the power to purchase, when you're ready to stop asking your cousin to co-sign for you, when you're ready to go to that dealership to go get that new car, when you're ready to move out of that one bedroom because you have a family now of six and you guys still haven't moved because the credit's been an issue because of the last eviction, come talk to me. Get on the university. Get on my Instagram. DM me. I respond to my DMs. Email me. Contact at DoraineDelevante.com. Call me. And guess what? Free ebooks. Can I give them two free ebooks? Of course. <laughs> okay. So I just made what is called a remedy kit. So it's two ebooks that I'm giving away for free. Everybody that's tuned into you get two free ebooks. All they have to do is text the word remedy. So R E M E D Y. So text remedy to 917. 8103329. I'm giving away two ebooks for free. I'm giving away my credit repair ebook and my inquiry deletion ebook. It's all yours, free. Wow. Well, you That's can't how beat much that. I'm confident in my products. Clearly, you can't beat that. You can't beat <laughs> a couple of freebies. And so I know you mentioned that, you know, once you improve your personal credit, you leverage that for business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my network is, you know, entrepreneurial thinking people, people mm -hmm. who own businesses. So is there anything you want to share with them related to that connection with building business credit? Because that's also, you know, a buzzword now, business credit, business mm -hmm. credit. Anything you want to so share on that? Um, the business credit part is amazing because business credit don't report on your personal. You can max that baby out, right? The only time it comes back to haunt you is if you decide not to pay it. If, only if you were a PG for that business, which is a personal guarantor. Now, the other thing about business is when you fix your personal credit, you can clone yourself as many times as possible. Because if you build your 700, your 750, your 800, you can leverage you to open a new LLC. Open 10 LLCs, then go for funding for all 10. Because if each one you can fund up to 100 to 200,000, you just really open up anywhere from 100,000 to almost a million dollars worth of credit, line of credit business credit cards, and we haven't even spoken about liquidating those credit cards, turning credit into cash, buying real estate, buying cars, putting on Toro, increasing your streams of income. That's a whole nother topic. If you're ready for this smoke, I got all of it. <laughs> I love it. Well, I appreciate you sharing so much value, so much detail, so many things that we can fact check and then come on and join your university. Absolutely. You know, I always say that just because the world is in a recession, it doesn't mean that you have to be in a recession. Absolutely. Okay? <laughs> millionaires are made during times like this and mm -hmm. climates like this. It's just about learning the information and taking action on it. So viewers make sure that you text the number that he shared. I also put it, you know, in the caption, his link. Absolutely. I'll repeat it again too. So they can hear Go ahead. it. Yeah. Repeat it one more yeah. time. So 917-810-3329. Text me the word remedy. You can Google me, type Doreen DeLevante in D-A-R-A-I-N-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-N-T-E -E -E, uh, dot com. Just type my name into Google. All of my stuff will come up. I am very Googleable. You'll see.
<laughs> yes. Well, we appreciate you, like I said, sharing so much information because this is a great time uh, to get your personal credit together mm-hmm. so that you can leverage it mm-hmm. for businesses and business credit and, mm-hmm. you know, the multiple streams of income. Yeah. It starts with you getting your personal part together first. So mm-hmm. I definitely encourage you to connect. Um, and again, if you're new to the brand, you know, you can follow me on Instagram at I am Lily May, the country spelling. I'm so excited to continue introducing you to dynamic entrepreneurs like Doreen who can give you insight and have programs that you can be a part of to take mm-hmm. your business and your personal life to the next level. So thank you again for tuning in to the Glenbitious podcast. Bye Let's everyone. Go. <laughs>